Hi, I'm John Tickles, and welcome to Remote RPGs. When I did my first Summon Knight Swordcraft story review, people really wanted me to do the sequel. And, as everybody knows, I'm very quick to whore out like a lonely cougar, as you could probably tell if you've seen all the ads over this video. Anyways, let's get cracking on Summon Knight Swordcraft Story 2, after I take a long drink from this cold, delicious coke bottle. Released by Ban Presto, why would you ban Presto? It wasn't that bad. In 2006, Summon Knight Swordcraft Story 2 is a pretty remote game for the Game Boy Advance, offering action RPG gameplay, similar gameplay to the first, and a lot of charm. The game did get some pretty solid reviews, but like the first, it doesn't get much attention. Summon Knight Swordcraft Story 2 didn't make any gigantic changes over the first title, but it made a bunch of great little adjustments that make it a much stronger title than the original, though not a game you need to rush to stores to find ASAP. Let's open with the story. In Summon Knight Swordcraft Story 2, the player is an orphan from the Colt Hearts clan raised by Craft Knights, and you're either a bland girl or a bland guy. The character aspires to be a craft knight as well. Your name is either Edgar Coltharts or Era Coltharts, who are edge fencers. And the kid finds themselves at the site of an abandoned ruin with their best friend, where a violent summon beast named Gora is awakened. In order to protect their new family and village from destruction, Edgar slash Era is bound to a wild summon beast and embarks on a journey to reseal the ruins by finding the mysterious Damon Edge. And that's it for story. The story is one of the things that didn't really improve over the original. It's still really cliche and slow, with the major issue being that the plot progression is laughable. For example, at first you have to find this awesome sword and slay the bad guy, but once you get this sword, you find out that <gasps> you have to find more legendary swords just to continue the plot because they probably didn't know what to do. Imagine if that happened with Zelda. Oh, you have to find the almighty Master Sword! What? It's six hours in and you already found it? Well, okay, you have to find six more Master Swords! Flawless storytelling! The characters are also not much of an improvement, as your protagonist is pretty cut and paste, and most of the characters aren't too deep or interesting either. Even the summon beasts are pretty one note though the fact that you have a group of them gives you a good amount of replay value. I'll give the characters this though, they are much more memorable and fun than the original ones. Although the story only has like a few twists and these kind of lackluster characters, what I loved about this game the most is that it doesn't take itself seriously at all, and it has very funny dialogue that showed that the writers were having a really good time with the material. It was a genuinely funny game at many times, and I really appreciated that because the story didn't do too much for me. The gameplay is where this game really kicks ass, even over the original, which had good gameplay already. This game is very similar to the first, so you should check out that review because I don't got the time to be repeating that stuff. I gotta make some money, like with this awesome Under Armour shirt. It's so comfortable and stretchy and good and line and and very good. So buy it now in stores. Thank you. Summon Knight 2 features more options in combat, including the ability to have a limit break ability kind of sorts called a mono shift, which sounds gross, so don't think too much about it. It's still your basic RPG with shops, equipment, random battles and NPCs. The biggest change in my eyes is the locations. Instead of one giant dungeon that you had in the first game, the sequel features many more levels for you to explore, and on a more superficial level, it's just nice to have a greater variety of colors, textures, and music to look at, even if each level isn't terribly original. I just didn't like how there was only one dungeon in the first game. I don't even really like that in Persona 3, one of my favorite games of all time. The new locations at least made the game feel bigger, though there still is the issues of having limited locations and way too much backtracking. Still, there are more puzzles and more options, and that's an improvement in my mind. 
In terms of other aspects of gameplay, there's not too much to go over. There's a good amount of side quests, the town is pretty fun to explore, and the game does feel a bit bigger than the first. You still have the really fun crafting system, and it's your basic, solid RPG through and through, though nothing innovative. In terms of the actual combat, this game still kicks ass. They didn't make many changes over the first tier, but they just added some new powers and made the game just as fun as the original. In any case, I think it's safe to say that the awesome swordplay of Summon Knight 2 made me take up the sword once again, in order to slay foul monsters. Really, there's not much more to say, aside from the mono shift they added. It's just like the first game, except with some new stuff, and it just feels like a cleaner game than the first, in terms of hit detection everything. The game also has a really good difficulty, being somewhat challenging but never overbearing, and it didn't take too long to beat either. It's honestly a perfect handheld game to just suck away some hours with some mindless fun. There is one thing about this game that pissed me off and I find I'm running into it too much in games lately. You know how every RPG has a little mini game the developers really want you to play? Like Triple Triad and Final Fantasy VIII? Well, I'm sorry to say that, like Final Fantasy IX, there's a point in Summon Knight Swordcraft Story 2 where the game grinds to a halt and then it forces you to play this stupid ass mini game in order to complete the game. What's worse is that this is a friggin fishing mini game. It's like The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Does the hero really have time to go fishing when the world's in danger? I just thought this was a pretty dickish thing for the game designers to do. Come on, game designers! The graphics in the game are really good for the Game Boy Advance. Everything is really crisp, there's nothing pixelated, and it looks amazing. The colors are vibrant, the character designs are fantastic, and the level designs are very memorable. The game features just much more visual variety than most games on the handheld. The music, like the first, is nothing noteworthy, but the game did have some really noteworthy pieces, particularly the one I'm playing right now, and it's a really competent soundtrack. In conclusion, Summon Knight Swordcraft Story 2 is everything that the original game was, and then some. The story and the characters are really simple, but you can tell that the writers were having a lot of fun, and that will help numb the pain of the dumb story. The gameplay is still fantastic and even features a lot of little improvements that made me love this game more than the first. In any case, if you're looking for a quick little action RPG that you can take with you anywhere, then Summon Night Swordcraft Story 2 is your answer. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Get your new Aaron's Mad sound effect! No! Fuck off! Use it on annoying children! Use it on Jehovah's Witness. We don't want to leave you the important message because we share it with everybody in, in neighborhood. You know? No! Fuck off! Use it when a commenter makes a suggestion. Oh, I should review that game. No!